Welcome to Campus Connect on Morris Educational Television. I'm Ed Yaw, President of the County College of Morris. I'm pleased to host today's program sponsored by the Morris Area Consortium for Local Educational Television, a cooperative effort by Morris County schools, colleges, and public libraries to bring you information on key issues in education. On today's program, I am pleased to be joined by Mark McLean, Executive Director of the Picatinny Innovation Center. Welcome, Mark. Glad to be here. Delighted to have you here today. So the Picatinny Innovation Center, please tell us what that is and what it does. Sure. Uh, first of all, let me, I'll refer to it as the PIC okay. to make it short. Um, the PIC is a business incubator, a business accelerator. It's intended to take small companies, startup companies, and give them a leg up, get them started, um, and uh, move them to success. Uh, there are a lot of incubators in the country right now, and it's really the best way for an entrepreneur to jump in and get started without having to spend a lot of time and resources. And how does the PIC do its business? How does it help these small entrepreneurs? Sure. Um, well, first of all, the types of businesses that we try and bring into the PIC tend to be companies that are making something. Uh, some, for example, technology or designing software, um, software apps for smartphones, things like that. Uh, we have a physicist working on some things. Uh, we'll go through some of that a little bit later, but that's the type of company we bring in. Um, the goal is, and, and this is the most important goal, is to bring them in and get them started without having to do anything. So they can walk in and 10 minutes later be actively working on their business. And the how do we do that is we have everything already set up. We've got the buildings, we've got the desks, we have things like soldering stations, we have uh, oscilloscopes, uh, all the way to the other extreme we have the, uh, the administrative things. We have copy machines, uh, we have fax machines, we have a very, very fast state-of-the-art uh, network in the building, uh, state-of-the-art phone system. Uh, literally, you can come in if you're an entrepreneur and you want to start to make something, we have all the assets uh, generally speaking, to get you started. Uh, and that's, that's a real big deal. Um, there's another piece of this which is not asset driven, and that is you have other entrepreneurs right next to you. So you have people to talk to. You have networking. Uh, you can get direction. I give as much direction as I can. Uh, the tenants, the other, the other companies do. So there's a lot of ways to try and get them started, and that's how we do it. And tell us a little bit about the facilities now. It's called Picatinny Innovation Center because it's physically located at the Picatinny military base. That's right. We're, we're actually on the, on the arsenal uh, behind the security uh, center. Um, and the reason for that is because uh, Congressman Frelinghuysen, who was very, very um, instrumental in setting up the PIC, uh, was able to make some buildings available through the Army. We have three buildings uh, on the base. Uh, two of the buildings are office space, and one of the buildings is a wet lab, machine shop type of space. Um, I want to stress that because we are on the base, companies can come in and can be working on products for the Army, but that's not a necessity. You can come in and join the PIC and actually be working on a product that has to do with the drug industry or, or anything else. Um, the Army is our host. Uh, they've been, they're excellent partners uh, for the PIC, and they make these buildings available and make other resources available to us. Um, and as I say, Congressman Frelinghuysen was instrumental in that. We'll get into the history of the development of the PIC a little bit later in the program. But uh, for now, uh, how many companies do we have there, and what's their range in size? Okay, we have uh, today about 13 companies. We've had a high of 22 uh, historically, um, so we do have some capacity right now. Uh, and the companies range in size from literally one person who wants to get started. Mm -hmm. uh, we have a company, one gentleman who is working on um, uh, software to do options, financial options for Wall Street, uh, and all the way up to tens of employees uh, for other companies that are more developed and are doing other, uh, they're a few years down the road in terms of their work. Uh, so lots of different sizes. That's, that's great. Well, I think we have some video uh, where we can take a video tour of the facility. So why don't we take a look at that video now? Sure. As we end this pro part of the program. 
Okay, this is the, uh, this is the main building. This is an office type building. Uh, that's where I'm located. And this is the uh, entrance hall. I haven't mentioned, but we do have an administration person who sits there and helps all the companies. These are examples of cubicles that are available. Um, this is uh, another office space. Uh, you can see some of the companies that we have here. NJIT is there. Uh, Millennium, they do some support for the Army. Uh, engineering firm. This is uh, Ares, this is their, their space, and you can see uh, a lot of equipment in there for engineering purposes. Uh, this is myself speaking with one of the tenants. Uh, that's the conference room, by the way. This is in, down in the wet lab machine shop building. Uh, this is a company that does boron coatings of metals. So what that picture was was actually the molecular, molecular level of a piece of metal. Um, and here they're actually examining the metal. Uh, this is a boron coating process. This is the oven, uh, and they take and they put the piece of metal in uh, a proprietary set of chemicals and put it in the oven and run it through a process. Now it comes out and the metal has been transformed. Uh, these are some of the machines and devices that they use. Uh, this particular machine is a grinder. So when they polish the metal so that they can actually examine it and coat it, uh, they'll put it on this to, uh, to run it through. This is another one of the companies that works with polymers, uh, plastics. Uh, they're working on some things such as clear armor, uh, in this case for the Army, as well as some uh, commercial applications. This is some testing of the clear plastics. These are, again, some other devices simply to test it. This one's actually interesting. This is a compression test uh, on a prototype product, and you can see there is a lot of pressure being put on this device, uh, and you can see it cracked. Uh, this is a company that is working on advanced battery technologies, uh, and this is a chamber that really has no moisture in it and is uh, no oxygen. It's an argon chamber. Uh, and that isn't, believe it or not, that's an airlock that you just opened. So you put something, to get something in there, you actually have to go through the airlock. Uh, and now she's working with it. Uh, and as I say, this is a battery company, so you're working with lithium. And lithium is, uh, if you're not careful, a volatile chemical. And some simple testing. This is the, uh, the electronics for testing some of the batteries. Uh, running them basically up and down. That was great, Mark. When we return from the break, we'll talk about the history and development of the Picatinny Innovation Center. Please stay with us. Hey, Roberta, it's Kathy. I found a great place that you have to check out right off Route 10 in Randolph. What is it? It's the Women's Center at CCM. The Women's Center at County College of Mars? That's right. It's a fantastic place located right at the County College of Mars. They do a variety of things to help you become independent. Like what? They helped me to identify my job skills and helped me with my resume. They have current job market information, too. I even went through a mock interview. I'm working now with someone to help me find a job with a future. That sounds great for you, Kathy, but I haven't worked for years. I've been home with the kids. Roberta, they specialize in helping women who have lost the support of their spouse, and you work with someone one-on-one. -on -one. I don't know. I mean, you know me. I don't even know the first thing about computers. Forget about a resume. They have one-on-one -on -one help to teach you about computers. They also have a legal clinic that can help you get valuable information regarding your divorce. They do a variety of things to help you get back into the workforce. They even have a job club open to any woman looking for work. How much does it cost? The advice is free. Free? That's right. Free. Okay, what do I do? Just call 973 328 5025 for an appointment and they'll tell you more. Welcome back to Campus Connect. I'm your host Ed Yaw and today we're talking about the Picatinny Innovation Center with Executive Director Mark McLean. Mark we're going to talk about the history and development of the PIC but before we do that you mentioned earlier that you have about 13 companies up there now. What's the process like for companies to become involved in the PIC? Okay. Um, most important thing is to get in touch with me. 
I mean, that's the first, begins the process. Uh, so either call me or send me an email, and both of those are either on our website uh, or on the NJBIN website, njbin.org. Um, and uh, give me a call. And what we do is we go through a process of just talking for a little while. What is the business that, that you're trying to start? What are you trying to do? What, you, what would help you to accomplish your goals? Uh, and meanwhile, I also then will give a description of what the pick is and what those resources are. And it's basically a very first cut of do the two fit together? Is there a way that we're going to be able to make something happen? Uh, if af after that first phone call, the business fits with the pick and the entrepreneur is, is comfortable that we can help them, um, we move to a, the second stage, which is they come in, uh, they spend some time meeting with me, touring the facilities, um, and uh, we talk for a couple hours in the conference room uh, and see really what would be the next steps. Uh, once we get through that, we really then have a good idea and make the decision should they be joining the pick. And this is a two-way decision. It's theirs and ours. And um, uh, at that point, I usually get a one-page, maybe two-page summary of the business. Uh, and I use that to send to yourself, Dr. Yaw is the chairman of the PIC, uh, as well as to my Army contacts in case they might have any interest in assisting the company. Um, and then we go ahead and we give them the approval and they join the PIC. And, uh, they come in and they literally uh, get started on their next visit. They, they pick out some space. I set it all up for them and uh, voila, we're started. That's great. And before, I think at the end of this program, we're going to show your contact information so uh, it'll be easy for people watching this program to figure out a way to get in touch with you to, to start that uh, process. But it might also be helpful if you gave a little of your own background and some of the expertise that you bring to this process. Sure. I, um, uh, in terms of formal training, I have degrees in accounting and finance, but uh, I spent most of my entire career in business. Uh, I, my last two uh, opportunities were as the CEO of a uh, wireless software company and the CEO of a wireless systems company, and both of these were very small companies. Uh, so I have experience with small companies. Uh, the balance of my career was spent in large companies with uh, a lot of different backgrounds. I did uh, joint ventures, uh, I did acquisitions, I did product management strategy, uh, a lot of different positions. Um, I also spent most of my career in Europe, doing business in Europe, uh, and I was very fortunate to be in San Francisco during what I'll call the Wild West period of, uh, mm -hmm. of, cap of uh, venture capital, which was the late 90s. Uh, so I've done a lot in different areas. That's great. Now let's turn to the history and development of the Picatinny Innovation Center. Uh, we are unique uh, in the country, as far as I know. We're the only small business incubator that actually physically is located on the military base. But perhaps you could uh, talk about the history. And sure, development. sure. Uh, we are the only incubator on a military base. And we can thank, again, as I said earlier, Congressman Frelinghuysen for uh, for his uh, efforts to uh, set up the PIC. Um, we were set up in 1996, and actually there are a lot of people who, it was a community effort to make the PIC exist. Uh, CCM, your role as chairman, County College of Mars, does a lot of assistance. Uh, the Army has made the facilities available, and as I say, has been a tremendous partner for us. Um, the Morris County Freeholders, uh, they have been partners with us. They're on our board of directors, and. Uh, uh, we also have had uh, local companies. Uh, a lot of the assets that have been uh, donated uh, to the PIC, uh, since it is a nonprofit corporation, came from companies such as Allied Signal, now Honeywell, uh, Beneficial Insurance. Um, uh, we've had donations from a number of different avenues. So the history has really been a, a team effort in the county. Uh, and the goal is to create new businesses and to create jobs. Yes. Uh, and that's, that's a real, you know, that's the goal there. Um, since then, I mean, that was the way it got started. Uh, and, and we also had help from New the state of New Jersey uh, through the Commission of Science and Technology. They gave grants to the PIC in the early years. Right. Yes, in the earliest of days, we had a lot of support from both the federal government uh, through some, some grant programs and from the state of New Jersey through the Commission on Science and Technology. Uh, and uh, since in, in recent times, uh, that uh, funding has basically disappeared. Mm. And we also had, had some funding from the, the county freeholders, and it really was a, a wonderful uh, joint effort. Uh, you mentioned earlier we, have, we do have a board of directors. 
which is appointed by the Board of Trustees of the college. The college technically uh, provides the administration for the Picatinny Innovation Center. We take care of all the accounting and all those kind of things mm -hmm. as, as well. But uh, it really has been a, a wonderful relationship between the college, the county, and the Army uh, to make this thing work. That's right, absolutely. And everybody gets something out of it. I mean, it's as I say, it's jobs. Uh, for students, it's a place potentially to have internships. Uh, for the Army, they get access to small companies who have innovative technologies. So it actually works uh, to benefit a lot of organizations and a lot of people. Yes, and I think we're one of the only uh, incubators in, in the state of New Jersey that uh, seems to be successful uh, both financially and in terms of our basic mission, which is to create jobs, as, yeah. you said, as you've said so eloquently already. Yep. Yeah. When Campus Connect returns, we'll talk more about the Picatinny Innovation Center and meet Bob Campbell from AIT Glass. Not all county college with Morris students look like me. Some look like me. Or me. Or me. Or me. We all come to CCM at different stages of life. And for different reasons. I plan to transfer to a university. I'm training for a new career as a nurse. But we all know one thing. CCM is where we want to be. So check out the website. Check out the website. Check out the website. And let CCM connect learning and your life. Welcome back to Campus Connect. Once again, I'm your host, Ed Yaw, and we've been speaking with Picatinny Innovation Center Executive Director, Mark McLean. Mark and I are now joined by Bob Campbell from Atlantic International Technologies. Welcome, Bob. Well, thank you for inviting me. Delighted to have you here, and the reason we wanted to include you in today's program is because your company, uh, AIT Glass, if I could abbreviate a little bit, mm -hmm. uh, is one of the successful companies who uh, came into the Innovation Center and has now graduated and, and now still functions outside the, the base. Uh, why don't you start, if you don't mind, by telling us a little bit about the background of your company and how it came sure. about in your own background. Um, back in uh, about the year 2001, which just seems like a long time ago, yes. uh, we were a, a, a company without a home. Uh, we started with ideas, most companies do, and our ideas were technically oriented in the manufacture of precision glass tubing. And we found the Innovation Center uh, through uh, another, uh, through one of my sons actually. Uh, he had been there delivering materials and uh, he told us about it and I went in and I put together a presentation and uh, they accepted us. The benefits to us were there were three of us starting this company. We had ideas, we had market, we had everything. But what we didn't have is a place to start. And the Innovation Center at Picatinny gave us that, that place to start. They helped us with everything you could think of. Equipment, they helped us with supplies, they helped us with uh, the technology that we needed, telephones, Xerox machines, everything else that you could think of. And we began our company. Uh, it was quite fascinating because we took space in about a, I guess I would think a 100,000 square foot building and we, get, we, we had 2,000 square foot in there. But <laughs> as, as we found out, there, were, there, were, there was equipment that was available for us. We borrowed it. Uh, they gave it to us. Uh, they signed it over to us. It's all virtually obsolete equipment, which uh, we didn't have to be concerned about. And in today's world, uh, we were there for about approximately three years until we reached a stage where we actually were big enough and financially secure enough to go out and find uh, space. And in fact, uh, when we were ready to do that, uh, a board, uh, director of the board of the Innovation Center was instrumental in, us and, in finding a space. So we actually moved into a building that was perfect for us, and that's where we remain today, in Rockaway, New Jersey. Right. And uh, some, some of the equipment that you're talking about uh, having borrowed or being given to you was actually uh, property of the Army. Uh, which is something that they do for other companies, uh, sometimes uh, you know, le loaning or uh, rent leasing for short periods of time, uh, some very sophisticated equipment, 
which can be made available to the companies. Yeah, I, had, I had mentioned actually earlier that the uh, the PIC has a lot of equipment already available. Right. But what I didn't mention was that the Army, which is, uh, that's an R&D center at Picatinny, the Army has the ability to pass on equipment and assets to help the companies just like right. that. So that's an additional level of support. Right. That's exactly what happened with us. We needed pretty much um, machine shop equipment. In other words, even when you're working with glass, you have to have equipment that you can used to uh, weld glass together on a lathe. We, we were able to get certain lathes. We were able to get machining uh, where we would convert them to water, uh, water-cooled machines so we could actually grind glass. And then we put together our whole facility there. And uh, we, we uh, ended up, by the time we left, we went from three people, we, were wor we had about six people employed. And today, we have over 20 people. And in fact, we even have some um, part-time folks from uh, County College of Morris working for us, mm -hmm. and especially this summer. We have two of them working for Great. us this summer, uh, as, uh, as you might imagine. So. Right. Well, that certainly fulfills uh, many missions of many different organizations. And can you tell us a little bit about some of the products uh, sure. without revealing any company secrets? No, but, no that's uh, quite right. We manufacture glass tubing that's used in the blood industry where they analyze blood. Uh, we're the primary uh, supplier for that materials. Uh, we, uh, gas chromatography is another wor world where we are instrumental in supplying glass tubing. We don't make the final product. We make the tubing. We make it, we supply it in lengths, whatever the customer wants, and we ship it to them. And uh, they make the final product, which is nice. Uh, we also have something we call Harvard, uh, Harvard tubing. Mm -hmm. uh, several years ago, Harvard University came to us to develop a special tubing for them. Now, from that little beginning, uh, we are now shipping that tubing all over the world to universities because they're all developing this one process. Uh, and I have no idea what that process is. It doesn't really <laughs> matter. <laughs> as long as they buy the glass from us, we're very happy to do it. <laughs> That's right. Well, tell us a little bit about your own personal background before you got involved with this company, because you had quite a, quite a career before that. Well, yes, I, uh, I actually came out of the music business. I was uh, uh, the uh, uh, senior vice president of international marketing for Sony Music. Prior to that, it was uh, CBS Records. And of course, that didn't prepare me for anything I had to do with the glass business. But my son and our other partner, they were the experts in that. Uh, my experience in business allowed us to develop the business side of the company along with the help from uh, all the equipment and everybody at the Innovation Center. So we we're able to develop the business that way. Well, that's great. It was a, a wonderful, wonderful story of uh, success for you and your family. And it continues. Uh, yes. Now uh, we are developing different products for different marketplaces. In fact, tomorrow I'll be traveling to see a, a, a new customer that we haven't done business with before, and hopefully I'll be able to get orders from that customer as well. So we're looking forward to that. That's great. I mean, it's great that he's been able to come back and join the board of directors yes. of the PIC yes. to pass on this experience to our tenants. That's, that's, that's great. Right. And, and Mark, we were talking a little bit before, what are some of the big challenges that, that the Innovation Center has now moving forward? And, and Bob can chime in on this, I'm sure, as well. Mm -hmm. I, I think by far the biggest single challenge we have is getting the message out, letting entrepreneurs and small companies know that the PIC exists, that we're there to help, and what we can do for them. Um, it, it's really important to get that message out. Uh, it's, it's not like it, there is an advertisement on TV of, of the PIC. So uh, that's the first one. The second one that I would, I would say is to make sure that we use all the resources of the PIC to assist the companies once they're there, uh, maximizing the use of the resources. And I would add one last one, and this is uh, an interesting challenge because it's a challenge for the PIC as well as the entrepreneur, and that is that when I get that first phone call, they're usually very nervous and challenged. It's, it's a trepidation to start your own business. And so being able to talk them through that and introduce them to other people who have also done it is a, is a big accomplishment. I, I agree. I think, I think for entrepreneurs to find out about it and to find out where it's located and the importance of being where it is, uh, again, uh, you're, when you first get there, you're in awe of what's going on around you and the history of what went on around us. We were just, we, we would look out the window or look down the, down the aisle or whatever and just 
we couldn't believe that this building was built in 1942 <laughs> and, and what it did and what it had in it. And it, it helped. But we were lucky. We were lucky because one of our people, one of our, in fact, my other son, was there and found out about it. Our job is to make sure that people in universities all over the East Coast of the United States, people who are thinking about starting companies, that they have an opportunity to come and talk with Mark yeah, totally. because the opportunities are there, and That's I would great. highly recommend it. That's great. Excellent. That wraps up this section of Campus Connect. Thank you, Mark and Bob. For more information about the Picatinny Innovation Center, please visit their website at picinnovation.org. Atlantic International Technologies has a new website online as well. And for more information about the County College of Morris, we welcome you to visit us at ccm.edu. I'd like to know your thoughts about today's program and ask you to share your comments and thoughts with me. You can write to me at Ed Yaw at County College of Morris, 214 Center Grove Road, Randolph, New Jersey, 07869, or email me at eyaw at ccm.edu. Mark and Bob, thanks again for being with us today and discussing the uh, Picatinny Innovation Center. Thanks again for tuning in. I'm Ed Yaw, and we'll see you again next time on Campus Connect on Morris Educational Television.